Okay, I think we have uh, with enough and we can begin. Uh, I'm so glad to see so many people gather here today. So many people interested or, or curious at least to know more about this project. As we'd like to welcome all of you to the launch event uh, of Transitions, a postgraduate journal. I am Leonardo Manulo. I am the event manager, so, so you know who to blame for this. And part of the human resources group, one of the three groups on which this project is built, as you'll learn in the next hour. Today, we have many speakers and much to say. Hopefully, we'll be able to satisfy your curiosity and leave no room for doubts or misunderstanding. However, at the end of the event, we'll gladly answer some questions, if present. So feel free to ask questions about our journal in the chat, either here on Zoom or later on Facebook. To help us sort of the question, I also ask not to use the chat for any other reason. Uh, now, since it's, it's not my job to uh, talk a lot today, uh, surprisingly, one might say, I'm delighted to waste no more time and present today's first three speakers. Luigi Marinelli, Professor of Polish Language and Literature and Head of the European American and Intercultural Studies Department at Sapienza University, followed by the two academic tutors of this project, uh, Yolanda Plescia, Professor of English Language and Translation at Sapienza and Director of English and Anglo-American Studies uh, MA program, and Mario Martino, Professor of English Literature, Founder and Former Director of English and Anglo-American Studies. And now I leave the floor to Professor Marinelli. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dear all, since I am the head of the whole department, I will permit myself to speak in Italian, as I said before. Um, ho letto con grande interesse la prefazione al primo numero che mi è stata gentilmente mandata da Leonardo Bagnolo. Questo primo numero di questa rivista così promettente di Paolo Dindino Sante. E il modello della rivista è un modello ambizioso. Un modello probabilmente, anzi augurerei a tutti quanti voi di, da non seguire fino in fondo, vista la breve durata della rivista e soprattutto la data terminale della rivista modello di questa transition americana che è terminata nel 1938. Speriamo che non ci sia di qui ai prossimi anni un nuovo 1939 anche se i segnali di scricchioli nel mondo non sono pochi, insomma. No? Eh, è da sottolineare eh, il senso di comunità, il senso di comunità che è, viene fuori non solo dalla, dal gruppo eh, che ha pensato e messo in piedi questa, questa idea e questa prima realizzazione, ma anche dalla da questo forward, da questa specie di manifesto, devo dire, molto bello e molto maturo di Paolo Dindino Sante, insomma, che dà un po' una linea collettiva. Se mai mette un pochino in crisi il concetto di eh, eh, omogeneità, eh, che è un concetto un po' aleatorio, insomma, di questa comunità, perché l'omogeneità fa pensare, può far pensare anche all'omologazione, più o meno di Pasolini alla memoria, insomma. Eh, ma io non credo proprio che questo sia l'intenzione dei creatori, degli iniziatori della, della rivista, cioè di creare una comunità eh, davvero, eh, come dire, monolitica e, e omogenea, nel senso eh, omologata a, a, ai propri fini ai propri, eh, e al proprio pensiero, insomma. No? Comunque eh, la rivista eh, si propone di andare oltre, perché fin dal titolo eh, Transitions, che è, è una parola inglese, sì, ma di evidente eh, etimologia, eh, latina, insomma, quello vuol dire, vuol dire andare oltre. 
eh, e siccome andare oltre significa anche andare avanti eh, in un modo transeunte, ahimè, come tutto ciò che è biologico e umano, eh, però eh, andare avanti appunto possibilmente in modalità transitiva, cioè è quello che mi sembra che questa rivista si propone, cioè di passare ad altri, no? attraverso un'azione che transita da un soggetto a un oggetto diretto. Ora, questa azione non può che essere un'azione giovanile e comunitaria, come è nelle intenzioni che spero vengano mantenute dal, dal gruppo e da, chi, e da chi vi seguirà. E come da voi voluto, appunto, questo soggetto e questo oggetto non possono che essere soggetti e oggetti plurali. Eh, ho notato tante cose molto belle insomma anche nel, nell'indice insomma che prima o poi ci, ci mostrerete eh, di questo primo numero sulla, sul concetto in qualche modo variamente declinato sul concetto di, di transizione ecco per un dipartimento che nel suo stesso nome ha l'interculturalità ho apprezzato molto il fatto che eh, l'intertestualità, che è la base di ogni inter interculturalità, è la base proprio in qualche modo, eh, come dire, concettuale dell'interculturalità, eh, sia appunto molto eh, espressa in alcuni dei, dei contributi. Eh, e l'interculturalità, così come l'intertestualità, sono processi transitivi. Eh, cioè non si tratta di uno Stato, ma si tratta di qualche cosa che viene, che passa transitivamente appunto da una, da una parte all'altra. Ed è per questo che, insomma, eh, io vorrei augurare a questa rivista, che tra l'altro credo nel primo numero, eh, Andrea Lupi me lo, me lo confermerà nel primo articolo che forse non dovrei dirlo ma insomma eh, eh, no, non voglio spoilerarvi troppo parla di Bergson che è, come dicevo a Leonardo ieri è un po' un mio pallino avendo letto più o meno la vostra età sia il saggio sui dati immediati della coscienza sia Mazziere Memoir sia l'evoluzione creatrice come, come dei testi fondanti della letteratura che mi interessava all'epoca, cioè della letteratura degli anni venti, dell'avanguardia, eccetera, e quindi anche ovviamente di Virginia Woolf. Eh, beh, insomma, mh, mi sento molto affratellato e vi posso dire, da direttore di questo dipartimento, direttore pro tempore, che avete sicuramente eh, il sostegno da parte del, del dipartimento e spero che eh, appunto in forme sia... Mh, Dire, istituzionali ma anche nella nostra come dire non solo benevolenza ma anche attiva collaborazione ecco eh, questo è l'unico l'unica cosa che vi posso dire eh, seriamente e ovviamente vi auguro molto successo perché l'iniziativa è estremamente eh, di questi tempi poi c'è bisogno di, eh, di comunità, ecco, quindi voi siete nati con questo spirito e, e spero che eh, lo possiate mantenere e tramandare, no? eh, far passare, andare oltre anche verso i vostri, i vostri colleghi che verranno dopo, perché insomma noi dobbiamo sempre pensare a quelli che vengono dopo, insomma siamo qui transeunti tutti quanti, grazie. Passo la parola a, credo, alla professoressa Plescia. Ok, a year into the pandemic and we are still starting to speak before we turn our mics on. So apologies for that. Grazie Luigi della tua introduzione. E... And let me speak English now so we can get into our um, into the 
the thick of our uh, discussions. Um, it's an honor to be invited here to introduce this project, which I don't think that, you know, um, is born by chance in the year of the pandemic. I'm sure you must have been thinking about it before, but I think that the pandemic has really elicited a lot of, you know, community building activities. Luigi was talking about, uh, Professor Marinelli was talking about community. And it's, it's, it's quite incredible to see how students who have been, you know, uh, whose spaces have been taken away effectively by the pandemic. I mean, it's been obviously, it's been a response that we've been forced to give in this you know, emergency time, but um, this, the physical spaces that have been taken away um, have left um, a space for a new kind of activity, I think, which is this community building, which I've seen students do in so many different ways over this year, and this has been incredibly enriching for me. So I thank you for that. And this is one of the activities that, that are being born and, uh, Perhaps it's the most structured one I've seen in the last year. And, uh, and what I'd like to talk about for a few minutes now is just how uh, I think you can use this space because you're in a unique position here of having something that is structured and that is moving towards the academic world in a very you know, decisive way. You are, I can see, we can all see that you have projects and that you know the direction you're going even though you say who knows where, but I think you do know where a little bit. I think you do have a, an inkling of where you're going, but at the same time, it's a freer space, okay, than, you know, uh, an established academic journal that has to comply with a number of, um, you know, market rules as well. So you're kind of in the middle, you're in between now at the beginning of your adventure. So. Um, I thought it would be interesting to explore this for just a few minutes. And before I do that, I want to thank uh, uh, Professor Martino too, because you know he, as you all know, is the founder of the Corso di Laurea, of the degree course, and thus, in a sense, the father of this project, I guess. Uh, it wouldn't be here if the degree course wasn't here. And I also want to thank uh, the Associazione Italiana di Anglistica for publicizing the event. And I'm sorry, I can't really, on these chats, I'm still not really good at following the participants, but I, I saw Elisa Bolki's name pop up. And as you know, she is the vice president of the Italian Virginia Wolf Society, uh, which also kind of took up our invitation and relaunched the event on their uh, Facebook page. So I'm glad that she's here with us. And I see a lot of colleagues as well. So really quickly, what has been my experience as part of editorial staffs? What can I, you know, what can I say to you at the beginning of this adventure? Um, an editorial staff is uh, a, a strange place, an editorial board, board and staff, because, you know, most of the time, um, people sitting on the board and the staff, there is this kind of hierarchical relationship, but I see in you this very strong collaborative group where, you know, you're both on the board and in the staff and everybody is doing as much as they can. Again, this is, I think, a little space of freedom with respect to, you know, true established uh, academic journals, which, you know, you might become, but when you do become, you have to remember this freedom you started from and try to keep it. So when I say editorial staff and board, I'm kind of mixing things up, but of course there are relationships between these bodies as well. Let's say part of, of in Italian, we would just say redazione, an editorial space where people are putting their heads together to decide how to plan uh, um, uh, an issue. Well, it's a space of uh, uh, dialogue for sure. I'm sure you've spent a lot of uh, you know, uh, nights up discussing what to publish, how to publish uh, from very small things like the font, which is not so small to decide. We, I have spent years of my life with my colleagues in editorial boards. Uh, especially in Memoria di Shakespeare. I see here Tonatella Montini. Uh, she knows <laughs> how much time we devote just to spending, you know, just trying to get the aesthetics of the journal right as well. I think that's an important aspect as well. But there's a lot of dialogue and exchange on what to publish and how to, on the guidelines to give to authors. So I think that is an important moment of your community building as well. 
However, I don't know if you've already experienced this, but um, maybe you already have. A an editorial staff or board can also be a place of conflict, right? Because you are trying to establish good practices. How do we go forward? Where do we move? What direction are we going in? There is a, you know, a line, an idea, una linea editoriale. It's not just, you know, a box in which, you know, you put different things. So putting all these different heads together and deciding where to go is important. And there will be moments of conflict, but, you know, as you overcome those, you will see that you have done a little bit, you know, you've, you've taken a few steps and you're already further on in your journey. And that is part of the transition as well. It's a place of practice. There's a lot of practical work going on. There, is, there are good practices being elaborated, thought about, hopefully. It's a place of culture, of course. You are trying to put something out in the world. You're trying to leave something. You are trying to communicate. Um, it is also, I would say, a space of mediation. You have, I hope, an idea of your audience. Who is going to read you? Who do you want to reach? Who do you think will be reading you now and will be reading in the future? Um, the choice of an online publication is also interesting because it has a far, far reach, but it obviously also has uh, an impermanent feel, which however is just an impression because I'm not sure you know, that print journals are much more permanent today. So really the permanence of your words will depend on your editorial strategies and the way you keep up this, you maintain mm, the journal and its online presence. I can see you have a very well diversified uh, online presence already. You have Instagram, Facebook, you have all of these things that none of my editorial boards or staffs that I've been on uh, had at the beginning. We started in a different time, but we are slowly catching up. Um, it's a place of education and formative place. I think, you know, a lot of you perhaps have this idea of moving on to research and this journal can be a workshop for you in that sense. To write the first few things, but also to elaborate this kind of critical judgment. It is a place of judgment. Uh, it's hard to have a journal without, you know, deciding what gets, what gets in and what gets excluded. So there is this kind of uh, uh, constant reflection on uh, what are our values, what are our core values. And uh, obviously we are scholars, so um, censorship has no place in our work, right? But we do have a standard, so we have practices to help authors reach certain standards. So um, as you think about all of these things, and I'm sure you already have, and you'll be thinking about them more as the articles roll in, each new article will you know, create the necessity of judgment, decision, dialogue, confrontation, maybe some conflict. That's fine. If that happens, you will overcome it. Uh, you're building a bridge as well. And I liked uh, uh, Luigi Marinelli's idea of, you, you know, he was talking about something that if we want to visualize it, we can think as, you know, something like similar to communicating vessels, right? I vasi comunicanti. You are in a kind of oasis, this kind of island, which is the course in English and Anglo-American studies, but it is not an island, really. It is a place, no man, and let's say no woman is an island. Let's add the gender uh, to Don's uh, uh, beautiful phrase here, but nobody is an island. And our course is strongly, you know, rooted in the department, in, uh, in Sapienza, in Italy. We believe that there is a reason to study English in Italy. And uh, um, so there will be communication. I can see a, a nice reaction on Luigi's screen. There will be communication between our uh, course, our journal, and uh, you know, the department. In English, in Italian, in any other language, the journal has chosen a language, but uh, you know, a language is also, again, a vessel. It's, it's there to communicate, to un veicolo, no? So um, I think that is enough for now. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, so I won't say anything further, but I, I do want to congratulate you all on your choice of vessel to make your transition into you know, the world of study on a more you know, mature level, the world of scholarship, the world of hopefully a job, who knows, a job in academia now sounds like something like, you know, 
like a lottery ticket, but, but, but if you start taking those steps one after the other and working in a certain direction, uh, I know that all of you will find your place, your space and your calling. So thank you so much. And I leave the floor to Professor Martino. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks to Alessandro. Thanks to our head of the department, Luigi, for backing up the transition projects. And for all he has said in the presentation, stressing the idea of, of community, go beyond plurality. I think this isn't the spirit of the thing. Although, as uh, Yolanda has said, the lingua used as a tool of communication is English. And thanks to Yolanda, who has touched upon many of the important features of this initiative. And thanks, most of all, to the board of the journal. I'm really pleased to have been given the chance of a few words today. And I stress just a few words on my part. Of the recollections, first of all, since a group of committed students came to me when I was still president of the program with this beautiful idea, which I soon liked and endorsed. I think it is a great project, meticulously and professionally set down. But besides this, of which you will hear more in a while, I think, I thought of how useful and formative it would have been and would be for the MA program. Indeed, it concerns all present and future students of the MA program in English, but also to students in other courses of the department. First of all, working on the journal can be a means to usefully, though partially discharged duties students might have as tutors attached to the course. And we hope to have in the coming years, tutors not only in good number, but also on a par in quality with the extent. Uh, secondly, it can also be a means to discharge duties students might have as participants in the Percorso di Eccellenza percorso that we have in the program and that the board can explain to the other students i'm sure better than i can and thirdly uh, for all the students who would like to join the founding group in their work again it could be a way to get the other training activities uh, in the real spirit of such activities which we so badly need to the completion of your study programs so the journal is really inside and part of the didactics of this course. And then there is, of course, the proper stuff of a journal, a space for students run by students, basically to write creatively and scientifically, to meet each other, to collaborate, to integrate cultures, to foster new and other projects. So, we could have no better wish than this journal to make round and enrich the attending of classes, exams, and so on, which are in the ordinary way of any student. I'm confident that the journal will be the space the international students need for a number of reasons, even reasons yet to be explored and discovered. Let me also wish the journal, the founding group, and all the future collaborators and readers the best of luck. And that transition might rank among the top of the line student journals worldwide. So thank you lads. And that's it for me. Thank you professor for joining us today for your beautiful words. And now we will go on with the second part of our event. And it's my pleasure to introduce the, the next speakers. But first of all, uh, I'm Irene Raponi. I am one of the uh, participants of the staff and particularly of the human resources group. So we deal with communications with readers, with the outside world and with institutions. And as Professor Presso said before, uh, during this past year, we've been deprived of our place, our space at university, but if there is something that this entire year has taught us is that a community is not necessarily a place, it's not necessarily a here, but it can be made of people. 
uh, especially of these people that you can see here and all the uh, university community that has been present throughout this period. And so, as our subtitle said, uh, we are starting from this point A, this point that is our university, our colleagues, our students, and we are so glad that we had the chance to find our place here. And we want to continue this journey, this, uh, this adventure uh, to who knows where, and we really hope that you all will join us and will support this project and really hope that everybody will find in transition uh, really a place uh, to have their voice heard, a place to meet others and to really be a part of a community that goes beyond any boundaries. And so now it's time for our speakers. I'm so happy to introduce a part of the transitions team and that will explain to you some aspects of the project. So you will hear different voices from transitions. And now we have uh, Andrea Lupi that is uh, one of our editors. Then uh, we have uh, part of our uh, graphic design and uh, social media group. So Francesca Titolo, uh, Katrina Napolitano and Ludovica Cipolla. And last but not least, we have other two editors, uh, Marco Marchesini and Latte Battiloro. So as Leonardo said before, uh, we will have uh, a Q&A later. So you can talk questions and we will go back to them later. So uh, thank you again for joining us and I leave the floor to Andrea. Thank you, Rene, for your introduction and thanks to Professor Plescia, Martino and Marinelli for your wonderful words. Um, what can I say? Well, um, I've been asked to discuss the birth, the, how transitions came into existence and as many other projects, as many other um, kind of activities, experimental activities, it was born first as a conversation. And it was a conversation we had with Irene when we were tutors of, of the course. And we felt the necessity after having passed um, two semesters in, a, in an online mode, in a distance learning, that we, we wanted to create something which engaged directly students in an active mode. We felt that um, staring at the screen, attending online classes wasn't something we were used to do. And we wanted to recreate that atmosphere of conversation, dialogue and debate we, we had experienced um, at, during our first semester in the AAAS course. And whenever we, um, as soon as we, discussed it with other members, um, bridging um, between generations of um, graduate students, we felt that there was a lot of enthusiasm towards this activity, which showed that many people felt the necessity to, to create a space, uh, as Professor uh, Plesha said, a freer space in which they could find their own voice and they could um, bring up their own opinion, experience, and vision of the world. And as soon as we wrote the manifesto, we realized that there was a necessity also to widen the range because uh, we felt that, for example, areas such as reviews and creative writings are uh, often neglected in, in the academic context, but we felt there was a necessity to do so. And, um, Another point was the inclusivity. Um, this is something we really strive for here at Transition, but something which is also a key component of the MA course. We like to, we, we didn't want the um, focus on the Anglo sphere to be something that was limiting, but something which was um, widening and enhancing the opportunities offered at Transition. So we realized soon that English was not just the means, was not just uh, the goal, but was just a mean to, to get to uh, as many students and as many um, scholars, uh, young scholars in this case as possible. So uh, the international outlook was something we, we looked for and we, we and was something that we felt was uh, compelling to do at the time because uh, having an online mode allowed us to get the most of it, to make the most of it and to get the best from the opportunity of interacting with others. And by doing so, we hope that we will have the chance to 
uh, interact with students from other universities as well. Um, thank you very much for your um, attention. And I will now cease the floor to Francesca, who will give us uh, an overview and an insight into the Transitions project. Um, thank you, Andrea. Good evening, everybody. Um, of course, as you know, my name is Francesca and I'm part and a representative today, one of the representatives of the uh, social media and graphic design team. Um, as you have noticed, probably this team has one of the longest names amongst, among um, the three teams working behind the curtains of transitions. And there's a reason for this. Uh, the, this, this team in particular is a multifunctional team that deals with at least three uh, aspects of what our name um, and title conveys. And communication is a vital part, both of the, the, of, the, of the team and of transitions as a student-based project, of course. Um, that part of our work regarding communication is a key aspect uh, for the development of the project. And as Andrea was saying before, the social void that was left in this year has been one of the consequences of the situation we have been living um, for more than a year now. And a part of the aim of transitions is to recreate this, that space of exchange and circulation of ideas outside the university walls, of course. But as far as the social team is concerned, uh, the need to recreate a virtual space of intellectual exchange, if we want to call it that, uh, becomes more important than ever when a face-to-face -face communication is temporarily um, unavailable, of course. So the communicative part of transitions aims at um, creating a bridge between the academic topics discussed at transitions and the people inside and outside the university um, walls. So as we have seen, the word inclusion that is a key point of our manifesto means also this, not only filling a gap that exists between students and academia, but also between a student-based academia, if we want to, to call transition uh, that, um, and the outside world. Uh, also usually with forms that violate somehow the norms since the social part, of course, uh, stands a little uh, beside the academic um, way of communicating. And as far as our team is concerned, inclusivity is directed to two different fronts. As I said, there's the external one that we try to reach with um, up-to-date, instant and more accessible discussions about the, let's say, the hot themes of both academia and the public debate. Uh, this front, of course, includes also, um, let's say, um, students outside the campus of Sapienza, uh, students with different and varied uh, academic experiences, which is one of the most important, we think, uh, point of, of gathering for, for students nowadays. Uh, then probably the most important front for the project as a whole is the internal one. Uh, transitions uh, is also a workspace, of course, uh, for new students who want to, to join the project and uh, who want to learn. And so collaboration and teamwork is uh, a key aspect of, um, of this project uh, for the future generations of transitions that we um, hope will be there um, to, um, to take our, our, what all of us have created and uh, to bring it on uh, to the future. Uh, so let's say that this is uh, the, um, the, the main point of this uh, workspace that we want to create. And this is the reason why I now um, leave the floor to one of our newest members of our team, that is Ludovica, and she will tell you more about uh, this, her direct experience with this um, formation at Transitions. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. Thank you, Francesca, for the introduction. 
So basically, uh, I'm Ludovica Cipolla, and uh, I basically represent the intrusiveness that Francesca just mentioned before. Uh, I just joined the group a month ago, and that's what made me a new member. Basically, uh, I studied university at Sapienza, and uh, uh, I would like to say that I heard about uh, transition of a graduate journal thanks to the tutors who uh, made a lot of publicity and also for the call of submission. And you know, when I heard about transition, I was thrilled because I always want to see what's behind the curtain of an editorial team and I wanted to be part of it. So I said to myself, why not? Let's, uh, let's send this uh, submission to the social and the graphic group because I belong to that theme. And uh, I decided to, to send uh, the submission to them because uh, I truly believe that creativity and communication uh, play a great role in the development of uh, a journal. Uh, moreover, I would say that uh, when you see something uh, um, that is a pleasure for your brain and for your eyes, um, it would be a really good combo. And uh, um, basically in, uh, in this theme, I'm learning lots of new things, not only how to use uh, platforms, like um, application, and also I'm learning how to um, develop my creative and uh, my communicative skills, uh, even though I'm quite talkative, I know. Um, basically, I'm also learning how to work on a theme, in a, in a team. And, you know, it's not always uh, easy, but uh, the final project that we reach uh, every time is always a bomb and it's worthy effort. I mean, uh, working in a team uh, means that uh, we have long session of brainstorming, um, uh, ideas that changes and develops uh, all over the time. And um, I think that's uh, what makes us a really good group, uh, a really good group because uh, we support each other. And uh, we basically uh, try to give our best in every situation and uh, um, to work in a theme in every situation. And actually so far uh, it was um, sending the submission to transition a postgraduate journal was uh, one of the best idea of 2021. And I'm truly grateful to be part of it. So now, I will leave. Uh, uh, I will leave the floor to Kadi, which is uh, the another member of our team. And uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ludo. Hi, everyone. I am Katerina, and I am closing the uh, social media and graphic design groups intervention. And my intervention will focus more on what's actually behind the the power of the image. And I will be explaining now the power of the image in what sense. Let's say, as you all know by now, <laughs> Transitions is an academic journal, meaning that all the attention and all the focus has to be shifted on the essays, on the debate, and on, let's say, the inside of the journal, right? Well, I am here to, to tell you that basically also the outside and what's on the surface is important as well. Let me make an example. Let's say you go to a bookstore, you, you enter the bookstore, you see a book, you see the cover of that book and you feel immediately drawn to that book. You want to get closer to it, you want to touch the book, you want to read the plot. And that's what the power of the image is. It creates engagement in the reader, in the person that is approaching the cover art and basically it catches their attention. And we as a social group, as a social media group and a graphic design group, that is basically what we do as well. We make sure that we catch your attention. We make sure that you stay engaged. And we also make sure that your finger stays pressed on the read more section of our blogs and of our uh, social media uh, accounts, because we want you to know more about us. We want you to get in touch with us, we want to create an interaction with you. And to create content that holds such power to craft such images is not always an easy task. Sometimes it is, and we feel totally blessed for it, but almost always is constant brainstorming, is constant bringing new ideas to the table, is constant exchanging of ideas and points of views. And this is actually an enriching experience on a human, point of view, because it 
almost never feels like work. It feels like always learning someone, uh, something from someone and always gaining new insights on everything. And that is actually a very good workplace environment. So we're actually very grateful for that as a team. And one thing that we as um, graphic design team strived a lot to achieve, and we are still striving to achieve is the um, visual identity of the journal. I mean, it's not something that it's always that explicit as logos. I mean, yes, you can see it from behind me. So sometimes it's that, but it's also about being very subtle. It's about giving you a range of colors, a specific range of colors, let's say a particular shade of blue, a particular shade of red, and have your brain think that, oh, that's transitions blue that's transitions red and it's also um painting in red all the s's thank you leonardo for showing the logo <laughs> it's also painting in red all of the s's as you will see in the journal and have you walk around and see a poster on the street and see an s painted in red and have you think oh that's a red s just like transitions and that is creating an identity that is achieving an identity and also because if your brain connects immediately to the image, uh, a concept to the image, it means that you are remembered. And if you are remembered, you're alive. And we as the whole team of transitions, not only as the social media and graphic design group, we as a journal as transition, we actually sincerely, sincerely hope that we will live with you for a very, very, very long time. Yeah, and so thank you all for being here uh, this afternoon. Thank you for all the support you are giving to the uh, journal so far. I am leaving the floor now to my um, editorial colleague, Marco. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Katerina. And hello, everybody. I am Marco Marchesini from the editorial team of Transitions. And I'm very glad to be talking with you today about this project in particular. Uh, about the part concerning the, the, the editing process behind transitions and of course behind our pilot number we are launching and pilot issue we are launching today. I am not going to dig too much into technical details. I would just try and give you a glimpse of what are our purposes and what drives our experience uh, as members of the editorial team. Um, as you will have the chance to, to see, and I hope you will have the pleasure to, to read in our issue, the articles and the reviews we have uh, selected and prepared for the pilot are so barricaded that uh, the topic we have chosen, that is to say transitions, has been analyzed under so many different aspects. Um, in this issue, for example, you can find our beloved Virginia Woolf, along with uh, Italian rapper Caparezza for Faulkner, uh, along with an introductory account of, on critical discourse analysis. And this, I think, says a lot about the spirit of transitions, that is to say, an academic approach to both academic and not so academic topics, which always find a way of uh, sparking interesting debate and critical reflections. Um, the fact that we just the first issue we have reached such a, a level of variety around a single theme, I think has to be taken as a success. Uh, this is because as long as a proposal results engaging, well focused and full of potential debate to be sparked, we'll always find a place in transitions. And we, we do believe that every paper can teach something, not only to the public, of course, but we do believe also it can teach something to, to the editorial staff and to, to the authors themselves. Since the, the, the draw up of our ethical statement and uh, editorial policies, we have been following the guidelines set in order to, to guarantee a successful and happy collaboration among editors, of course, and between editors and authors. The, the virtual space that stretches beyond the university's walls, as we, as, we, as we said in our manifesto, is increasingly broadening, thanks to our various call for paper, for applicants, for advisory boards. In a world, we are uniting different people, different realities, and different minds. And I must say that, humanly speaking, this is something really to be proud of. Um, 
as you will see, uh, transition, transi transitions is also uh, enriched by uh, a section devoted to reviews, um, which somehow underlines the, the aspect somehow unorthodox of this, um, of this journal. Um, indeed, we, we wanted to leave free initiative to, to the authors, whether they wanted to review a TV series, a film, or, or what have you. The important thing is, of course, that they stick to the, to the topic we have chosen for the, for the issue. And uh, finally, my speech would not be complete without a uh, mention of our section devoted to creative writing. Um, unfortunately, as uh, Andrea also said, creative writing and creative arts in general are seldom posted in countries like Italy. Uh, it is usually a domain of private enterprise and personal initiative. Um, in this sense, we get ideas from the Anglophone world, which is um, more used to devote courses, if not entire departments, to, to creative writing. Um, in this sense, so we are more than welcome to uh, edit pieces of creative writing, but we also and will try and foster these activities through the social media and the like. Um, in this, um, yes, so we, we, we truly believe that this is a part of writing worth cultivating, and we do believe in the importance in the life of students and in fact, in the life of individuals, of cultivating not only uh, a kind of critical thinking, but also a kind of creative thinking that can be said to be truly unbound. And with that said, that's it for the moment for me. And thank you for your attention. I will now leave the floor to my colleague, Asia Batilora. Thank you, Marco. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Asia Battiloro and I'm part of Transitions editorial team. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank my fellow transitionists for giving me the opportunity to be part uh, of this wonderful project. Um, we together have created a community during a very difficult moment where uh, we were at a loss of opportunities for discussion. Transitions is now a virtual space, uh, but is already functioning as a workshop. We can only hope that in the future, we will be given the chance to strengthen these essential components through face-to-face -face meetings. Since I've been asked to say a few words about Transitions as a workshop, let me explain briefly what the idea of workshop really is. This word uh, signals a desire for our journal to also be an educational program. Transitions is not a class A journal. We do not expect our authors who are still students to be experienced academic writers. This is why the editing of their contributions is a lengthy process. Uh, during the reviewing period, uh, editors and authors work together to enrich the original text conceptually and also linguistically. Uh, this is to say that our aim uh, is not only the one of publishing, but we also hope to, have, to help our authors to become more aware of their own writing. This is why sometimes we will postpone the publication of some contributions because of course we prioritize quality. We want to walk alongside uh, our authors, helping them in every step of the, the way, basically. Uh, this is transitions as uh, a workshop. Um, I will not abuse your attention any further. Uh, I'll now leave the floor uh, to Irene, since we're all very excited to know something more about the issue. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Adia, and thank you to all our speakers. I hope you really had the chance to have a glimpse uh, at transitions at our project, and I really hope uh, we sparkled some of your curiosity to learn more about this project. So uh, now uh, we have reached the last part of our event, and it's time to meet uh, our editor-in-chief that will present, will present our first issue, our pilot issue. So uh, it's now a pleasure to introduce uh, Paolo Indino Sante, and uh, he will explain uh, something uh, about the, the politician. He will show you what we have created till now. And uh, Paolo, 
uh, yes, uh, recently graduated from La Sapienza in English and Economic Studies, and he has been an incredible resource. He brought so much to this project, and it has been uh, an extreme pleasure to work with him. And he also brought uh, so much from his uh, work in the editorial experience in the editorial world. And yeah, we can say that uh, this project has become this big also thanks to him. And so I think that it's time to leave the floor to him. And of course, if you have questions, we can answer later. And thank you, everybody. And show a moment, Paolo, you can go. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you, Irene, for your uh, kind of generous introduction to, my, uh, to, to myself. And thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, I, I'm actually delighted to uh, have the honor uh, of presenting the pilot issue today. So I'm gonna share my screen so that I can uh, show you something and maybe give you uh, a taste of what Katerina was saying when she talked about uh, the visual identity of transitions. So I'm trying to share my screen. Can you see my presentation? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. So before I uh, move on to the pilot issue, which is gonna be published actually uh, at the end of my speech, uh, I want to uh, delve a little bit more into the connection that we have with uh, transition. So I'm gonna explore the transition from transition the literary journal to transitions a postgraduate journal and transitions the pilot issue of uh, the, the letter journal. So let's start with uh, transition, which uh, as Professor Marinelli uh, anticipated, is a, a, was a Paris-based English language literary journal published between 1927 and uh, 1938. And in the first uh, issue of uh, transition in the introduction, uh, to, to this issue, uh, the American editors, uh, uh, Jolas and Paul, clearly define the pioneering transnational scope of transition when they write, and I'm quoting, transition wishes to offer American writers an opportunity to express themselves freely, to experiment if they are so uh, minded, and to avail themselves of a ready, alert, and critical audience. Uh, to, the, to the writers of all other countries, they go on to say, transition extends an invitation to appear side by side in a language Americans can read and understand. So they're basically referring to English, of course. Uh, then they go on to say that prospective contributors to transition need not be well known, quite the contrary. So, uh, and they write, Contributions will be welcome from all sources. Uh, and the fact that an author's name is unknown will, will assure his manuscript uh, an even more favorable examination. So uh, authors, especially uh, body authors, are strongly encouraged to, where strong, strongly encouraged to uh, submit their contribution to uh, transition and to share it with the readers of transition uh, whom um, Jola and Paul uh, wish to, um, sorry, wish to imagine as a, and I'm quoting, a homogeneous group of friends uh, with whom they can share uh, what has seemed significant to them. So as Professor Marinelli said, we also have in mind this quote, uh, we had it in mind when we uh, basically founded our journal, and we also would like to uh, imagine our audience as a homogeneous group of friends, but we know that it's not that homogeneous. And we want to uh, include all the, their differences in our project. So um, this is uh, what Jolas and Paul wrote in their introduction to the first issue of uh, Transition in 1927. And now let's see how their principle uh, apply to our project even if you already had the chance to um, guess a little bit about it. So let's move to, towards transitions and say that uh, despite being born in a, a quite different context, 
uh, transitions equally tries to foster creativity and a sense of community, as we, we've already repeated many times today, amongst young contributors and readers. Using, that's true, uh, English as a lingua franca, but also uh, devoting some attention to non-English languages and texts. And I will give you an example of this in uh, a few minutes when I'll show you the table of contents of our first uh, issue. However, as we said, uh, transition, uh, even if it's uh, um, deeply indebted to uh, transition, the literary journal uh, has some differences, differs from it uh, in a, a number of aspects. It was first conceived in 2020 in the middle of the uh, global pandemic in which, we're, in which we still are. And it was first conceived as a virtual gathering space for university students facing unprecedented times. And it intends to uh, stimulate critical thinking in an open access publication where uh, authors can make their voices uh, heard and share their ideas uh, with their peers. Of course, Transitions is not just a literary journal, so we're not just publishing short stories or poems, we have them, but we're also sharing uh, academic essays and uh, reviews, uh, maybe a particular kind of review because it's not, uh, it's not just the review of uh, an academic text, a book, and so on. Uh, we basically review everything we, uh, we like, everything that, as Jola and Paul would put it, uh, seems significant to us. And of course, our contributions are quite brief, so they do not aim to uh, have a huge impact on a, a given research field, but they still try to express the author's uh, viewpoint on the topic uh, they chose. And now let's move on to uh, the pilot issue of Transitions, a postgraduate journal, which is entitled Transitions, as, it, uh, as all the contributions published in it uh, actually engage with this concept from uh, a variety of uh, perspectives. And so this is the cover of our uh, first issue, which, which was designed by uh, Rita Roccamo, uh, who I'm sure uh, couldn't make it today because she told me so, but I want to uh, thank her once again. And I, I can, I, of course, uh, I, I didn't say this, but I edited this uh, pilot tissue, which contains contributions from, uh, by uh, Leonardo Bagnolo, Asia Battiloro, myself, Andrea Lupi, Alice Mangia, Jennifer Marano, Marco Marchesini, Michela Piccione, Irene Raponi, Leonardo Spoletini, and Francesca Titolo, who I think are all here today, and I would like to uh, offer them my uh, special thanks for uh, their contributions because they were uh, really thought provoking and they uh, taught me a lot. I think they taught a lot uh, to our uh, editorial board. We really enjoyed uh, editing them and working on them together with the authors, even if we uh, probably didn't have much time to uh, discuss um, things as deeply as we would have liked. So uh, this is the uh, cover of the pilot issue. And, and now I'm gonna uh, show you the titles of the um, contributions that are published in it and that are divided in three sections, which are academic writings, creative writings, and uh, reviews. And even if um, contributions appear in a given section, it's still possible, of course, to find connections between one contribution and a contribution appearing in a different section, as well as a contribution appearing in the same section. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So let's start with academic writings. These are the titles of our um, academic essays for this issue. And as you can see, we have uh, a wonderful essay on uh, Virginia Woolf's Kew Gardens. And we move on to uh, an essay on William Faulkner's As I Lay Dying, uh, as a text in transition from uh, modernism to postmodernism. Then we uh, go on with a, a, a wonderful essay on um, 
the let's say the um, coming of age components of uh, Ishiguro's uh, Never Let Me Go. And then there's uh, Michela Piccione contribution on um, African American vernacular English in courtrooms, which is a, a, a perfect, a convenient starting point if you uh, want to know more about how this uh, non standard variety um, can actually uh, negatively uh, influence uh, the uh, verdicts of trials. And uh, Michela's contribution inaugurates a, a brief series of contributions that are concerned with uh, the concept of transition from a a uh, linguistic perspective, because after uh, her essay, we have uh, Lorenzo Zanini's uh, introductory account um, of the concepts of intertextuality, interdiscursivity, and recontextualization from the perspective of uh, critical, um, um, critical discourse studies. And I'm glad that we also have a very, very practical example of how uh, critical discourse analysis works in the following essay which is Alicia Manja's uh, um, insightful analysis uh, and comparison of uh, Donald Trump's and Joe Biden's uh, different but equally strategic use of indexicality in their uh, inaugural addresses. And at the end, we have my uh, humble notes on um, the significance of track-to-track -track transitions in uh, 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 Caparezza's concept album, Il Sogno Eretico, which also provides a smooth transition to the uh, next section, which starts with a very difficult transition to sleep. And I'm referring to uh, Asia Battilora's performance poem, Cognitive Processing During the Transition to Sleep, in which the speaker is actually uh, very much haunted by half sleep thoughts. And it's quite interesting, I think, that in the following creative writing piece, um, the, uh, the very word uh, haunting, to haunt, uh, takes on a, uh, let's say, positive and almost opposite uh, connotation, because uh, Marco Marchesini uh, explains the way in which, according to him, culture works, and in which uh, ghosts and specters can uh, help us foster our creativity. So I think that that's going to be a, a wonderful bridge towards the next creative writing section in transitions. Then we have the uh, third and last section of the pilot issue, which is the section devoted to uh, reviews, in which three uh, very different 2020 texts are reviewed. And when I mean text, I mean literally uh, the the word in its in its uh, wider significance in its wider meaning, because we have Jennifer Marano's uh, review of a, a multimodal Insta poetry uh, collection, which is uh, Rupi Kaur's uh, Homebody, which is followed by uh, an insightful and very interesting review of uh, Tyler Childers' um, new album, which is entitled uh, Long Violent History, which also relies on a, a surprising uh, transition towards the end to convey its uh, general meaning, uh, which is larger than the single meaning that uh, each individual tracks would have without this uh, multimodal transition from uh, nonverbal to verbal language. And we conclude this um, perhaps uh, too short issue of um, transitions with a, a review, which is also uh, uh, a homage to uh, Dave Chappelle, which is Leonardo Bagnolo's uh, review of this uh, Netflix show in which um, transition means basically the career of the uh, American stand-up comedian whom is uh, homaged by this show. But we also uh, find at play a, a transition uh, which is a structural transition as uh, a lot of uh, entertainment personalities follow one another, intermingled with uh, footage from uh, Chappelle's previous show, uh, previous shows to uh, tribute him. So this is what has 
seems significant to us for this uh, pilot issue. This is uh, once again, the cover of this uh, issue, but I'm sure that this is only a taste of what is to come from the uh, wonderful workshop of transitions and the ever-changing community behind it. And I'm sure that the world community uh, will appear very soon in our projects, in our next projects. Uh, thank you. I think, Francesca, you can go and make publish the pilot issue on our website, please. I officially announced that the pilot issue of Transitions is online, available free for all of you. And um, I'll post the link to the page where you can download it in the chat here on Zoom, but you can find it very, very easily on our website, which is transitionspostgradjournal.wordpress.com. And thank you. So, I think we have arrived at the end of this event. Now, uh, I thought we would have had some space for our Q&A, but actually I see no question in the chats. So uh, perhaps we have been too clear, too, too much. We've done too much today. <laughs> um, however, I have to say we really, we are eager to hear from you, all of you, to have some feedbacks, uh, some feedback to, and you can send anything to us uh, by mail. You can check our pages on Facebook, Instagram, um, and also on uh, Twitter, I think. Um, but yes, we are at the end now. And so I'd like to close saying that uh, I want to thank everybody. Uh, you who have watched us and followed us, all of us, um, and obviously the whole trans transitions team uh, many of whom didn't speak today, uh, but what can I say that we did for this event, if not even harder. Uh, also, thanks obviously to Professor Marinelli, um, to Professor Plescia and Professor Martino, both for their presence uh, here today and for their support in the first phase of our project. Uh, now, the project is definitely long. Uh, it, it is now, it's been published the issue. Uh, Thus, I can only ask you to keep following us. Our team is in transition, but you are not. So keep following us, please. Keep reading our issues and give all of our future authors a chance. So the editorial team will, will keep the workshop up and running. Uh, but we need you, the readers, to make this project meaningful. Thank you all again. And we have a round of applause with mics open, a few of us at least. <laughs> yes, yes well done, well done. And of course, if you, I don't know, if you want to ask anything right now, why not? I mean, we are here. I can see congratulations in the chat box. Maybe someone, perhaps Professor Montini or Professor Blakesley would like to reiterate in person. Or they may have written just before leaving, possibly. Elisa. Looking forward to reading future issues. Thank you, Elisa. Scusate, faccio da valletta because Elisa is my colleague and friend, so I read her comment out. Hi, uh, can I ask a question? Maybe it's mainly for Francesca Titolo and the social media group. Please, please, yes. Okay. Um, hello, congratulations, first of all. And I wanted to ask you if you are planning to expand your social media presence, maybe on other platforms um, other than Facebook and Instagram, 
or if you are just focusing to in the, well deciding to focus on um, those two um, I think I can speak for everyone. Um, yes, of course, that the, the, the final aim of our, um, of our social project is, of course, to conquer all the platforms available out there. Um, but yes, we, I, I don't think we've mentioned this before, but we all, we're also uh, on Twitter. So you can find us on, on Twitter, of course, because um, I don't know if you if you know this, but Twitter is quite an engaging platform for the academic world, and so we hope, especially for that platform, to boost um, our presence there as well as the other uh, platforms, of course. Uh, but yes, the the answer to to your question is is yes. I don't know if you had any specific platform in mind, but yes, the answer is yes. Thank you, thank you. So I will be checking your social media accounts. Thank you. Thank you, Matilde. Can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. Okay, so first of all, thank you. Thank you all. Very, very, very interesting, this uh, pilot project and the launch of, of, your, of your journal. Uh, first of all, I have to say that I'm going to steal Alice's essay about uh, critical discourse analysis, Joe Biden and Donald Trump, because I've just assigned a thesis about um, gender issues in Kamala Harris and Joe Biden uh, uh, inaugural discourses, uh, speeches. So I, I want to, uh, I can't wait to read it, actually. Uh, I have a comment for, I don't know to whom I am addressing this comment, but someone probably will, will answer my my question, my comment. Um, have you thought about inserting a section about translation? Since the journalist transition, probably uh, a fourth section about uh, translation would be would be perfect. And I'm and I'm telling you so because uh, I know that there are some journals in in Italy. Uh, about translation, but uh, not so much about the practical aspect of it. I mean, where you can write actual translations of short stories of uh, short poems or something like this. Uh, and so uh, we have this strange panorama in, uh, in Italy where you have, um, I mean, publishers where you can publish entire uh, translations of novels and long stories or whatever, but not so much for short stories, short poems. Uh, I mean, have you ever uh, thought about having this session on translation probably for shorter uh, works, uh, kind of critical editions, uh, short critical ed editions of very, very short um, pieces of literature or whatever? Don't know if you heard my question and if it was clear. Maybe I can answer it. Yep. If the others are happy with that. Okay. So uh, thank you for your question because we we're, we've actually been uh, thinking about that, and we know that, for example, uh, Dr. Argan, who is uh, t uh, here today, uh, has a, a sort of project with that, with uh, translations in which uh, students not only translate but also. Uh, comment on their uh, own translations. Uh, what we would like to do actually, but we're still uh, thinking about it, is including uh, also creative writings that are creative writings that are written in a different language and have them translated to English so that uh, that may actually create a sort of um, dialogue between other languages uh, um, and not only English. But we still have to think about the idea of translating, uh, like original. Uh, I mean, not original uh, pieces. But uh, yeah, we, we really thought about the idea of translation, and we actually expected a, a even a short a short contribution on that for this pilot issue. Uh, but who knows? Maybe in the, in the next pilot issues, there 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 are gonna be also uh, essays or things like that. 
but I, I, I don't know if we uh, are going to uh, create a fourth section for that, but we can actually think about it. Uh, yeah, thank you. So if, if there are no more questions, uh, I'd say we can call the meeting off. And uh, so I don't know if maybe we can wait for anything else. Let me just add again, once again, my congratulations. Now that I've read the, the uh, table of contents, I'm excited to read. I see Professor Martino's mic is open. Maybe he would like to say something. Did you open your mic, Mario? Um, yeah, maybe just say something for generally international students, how mm. this journal can them getting into this uh, course together with the Italians, let's say, because the first number has been mainly uh, right, Italian. So the journal is completely open and we wish perhaps to say something about the next numbers so that people can feel encouraged to send not only academic articles or proposals, but just join in in the initiative. As um, uh, Cipolla has said in, as, um, in what she has um, <laughs> been saying as a last come maybe, but uh, really to the purpose, this is an activity that lets you grow uh, working inside, not only writing and presenting your uh, scientific or creative point of view, uh, but working together with others. What I can I don't know if you can reassure students. Oh, obviously, yes. Uh, we are going to have, of course, more issues out. Uh, we are voting now for the next one. Uh, the call for submission will be out, uh, I hope, as soon as possible. And we are trying to, to keep it, in, well, let's say not a mystery, uh, but through the um, through the call of for, for submission, we will give all informations and we'll try to keep the structure of three sections. Uh, but obviously, uh, we'll try also to be dynamic when receiving submissions from the uh, from the authors, uh, from the wannabe authors, let's say. And and so uh, all what I can say is issues will be out. Just give us a little bit more time. For, this, uh, for the call to be uh, public, published. And we will welcome again all kinds uh, of abstracts conforming to the style sheet we have. And we will definitely have the editorial team working as they have done greatly uh, for this first uh, issue. And well, uh, I think that's all I can say. Yes, if, if I can add something, um, the internationalization of the journal is something we really care about and we are really working on. Um, for this issue, it has been quite complex to obtain uh, an international readership because um, the issue has been put up in literally um, around three, four months. So it has been quite uh, tough for us, uh, even as members, we, we had to write something for, in order to, because we did it, we, our first idea was, okay, nobody's gonna send anything and we have to be, to, to, to create a journal out of our own contributions. But 
this is something we, we, we want to work on. And I think um, we will try to reach also students overseas and uh, also um, not only in other Italian universities, but also European universities. I wonder whether there could be also um, partnerships and collaborations along the line of the CVs project, maybe with uh, students from uh, universities in that project as well. So uh, I'm reading now on the chat, we have uh, a question by Shani. Have you explored the idea of creating a survey on your website? Yes, we have, absolutely. Uh, not only on our website, but actually uh, we will try to survey the, uh, the interests to analyze them on, uh, on all our platforms, on social medias. Um, and we'll try also to, to tailor, let's say, the event. Uh, based on such surveys. Okay, I can see there is another question into the chat. I can answer that from Ilaria. Uh, I imagine the next call will be published on the website, other than social media, of course. Uh, she's asking if there is a notification system. And if I remember correctly, Ilaria, you are one of the students uh, in our course. and. Yes, we will publish the new call uh, on our social media, on our website, and there is also the chance to receive uh, email notifications from transitions about our issues and our calls. And I don't know if you mean the call for the, uh, for the issue or for working in transitions, but just the same, they will be published uh, on all our platforms. And of course, if you are a student uh, at Sapienza, you can also have the chance to work uh, in the project and have the credits for the other training activities. So we didn't mention this before, but of course, we are part of the university, thanks to our professor. And so, yes, there is also the chance to, to work here and make it part of your curriculum. So I hope I answered your question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'll reply to uh, Carlos' yeah. question from the, um, uh, from the chat, if I can find it again. Have you explored the idea of creating a survey on your website to understand the major interests of your readers? We actually didn't. Uh, Leo, you want to you want to speak? No, we already we already uh, we already did answer to that. Oh, sorry, sorry, we sorry. Answer to that, yes. Uh, okay. But but we have a last uh, in a question. Uh, here it is. Uh, are you thinking? Uh, are you thinking something uh, for students of school? Uh, mm, if we, uh, I, I don't know if we, you're asking if we are taking some uh, submissions like uh, some abstracts from students of school. In, in, is this the question? Yes, I speak. Uh, I'm Rafaela. It's Rafaela speaking. Uh, just I want to know because I'm a teacher and uh, I've been teaching in uh, high school. So since I do. I, I was really impressed about this project. I was thinking, I was wondering if my students can have something with you, maybe if they can read or if you, if we can work together, or if they can cooperate with you, I, I don't know. I just was wondering and that's why I'm asking you. Um, we are not taking abstracts for our issues uh, from students of school, we are since we we tailored this project for um, undergraduate and graduate students. Uh, yeah, I understood. I understood it. So yes, but, but just but I was obviously, wondering. Obviously, we are keeping the project uh, open in to well on, on social medias and also on feedbacks for of any so kind. We can we anyone. can go there and then we can. Start. We can read uh, the your issues or your articles, and maybe we can work together. Well, I I can work with them with my students. So that's maybe 
I was thinking about a cooperation with you, or maybe it's, I don't know, the, the AI school, the last year, they want to go to the university, so maybe they can, they can read, they can run something for, like, orientamento, I mean, but maybe if you don't, if you are not interested. Well, I, I, have to, I have to admit that uh, we, we did that far without uh, without the without the science, uh, but mm -hmm. I think this is just because this is a okay, let, young project. I let you I let you think about it. <laughs> so maybe you can have it. It is uh, just an idea. So maybe later on you can take it as a project, maybe with students too. Mm -hmm. Yes, if, if I can add something, um, the project is really in constant transition. So uh, these, these are kind of issues that we have never uh, realized, that we have never thought about. Um, um, I mean, even in relation to Professor Ciambella's question about trans translation, um, we like to think of our, we, we set up a manifesto to have some core to have a sort of backbone of values, but then we tend to adjust ourselves um, as we go along because we are literally working on it day by day and we realize things uh, gradually. So um, that's why um, the project is, 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 is in constant debate and in constant transition itself. Also because we, we do not have a directive sort of um, management uh, by students, but we have students transiting from, from one another, from uh, alumni to current students. I want to add something real quick that perhaps we haven't mentioned, but if you want to get in contact with uh, our authors for this last issue, you can send us an email and we'll get you in touch with them. Yes, please, if you read our issues and you want to tell us something about it, uh, we will be uh, glad to receive your comments on it. So uh, feel free to email us and we will uh, um, get in touch with the authors and let them know about your uh, opinions and criticisms, whatever you uh, feel like uh, saying about what we've just uh, published, please. Okay, I, I think now uh, it's time. Uh, I want to thank again, everybody. And, and please keep following, following us since we will publish as soon as we can the next uh, call for submission for the next issue. Uh, and we really can't wait for uh, contributions and engagement uh, by everybody in our project. So thank you all again. Uh, I would say transition out. <laughs>